Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It is Saturday, the 18th day now of September 2021. Let's take a look at what's happening out there across the tropics this weekend. Pretty active map overall. We have Odette here in the northwest Atlantic. Not your traditional structured tropical storm. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute on the satellite animation. 95L out here to the east southeast of the Windward Islands, Leeward Islands, that area. Lesser Antilles is a more general term. And then 97L over here, upping the chances of development. This one might sneak in and become a name storm before all is said and done. This is the five-day version of the graphic showing you the expected track areas of these systems as they develop. This will absolutely not be of any influence this could be a little bit interesting for the islands. We'll see about that. I'm not too concerned about it, though. And Odette going to move on out into the North Atlantic, and we can see that on our tracking map here. It'll stay up in the North Atlantic, kind of hanging around because of this negative NAO that's going to set up. Negative NAO, or North Atlantic Oscillation. And that just basically means for us, uh, a lot of blocking up here, so everything kind of gets traffic jammed, if you will. And this will kind of mill around up in the North Atlantic. And uh, until it transitions over to extra tropical, where it loses any tropical characteristics that it does have, it'll pile up a few more ace points for the year. And it'll disturb any of the maritime interest up here, any shipping channels through this area, the sword fishing fleet. Remember that movie in the book, The Perfect Storm? Yep, this is the time of year the sword fishermen go out and the long liners, as they are called. But yeah, this will be a huge ocean storm. You can already see that on the satellite this afternoon. It's a very large storm system. Center of circulation back here getting sheared pretty good. So the deep convection is pushed off away from that center. Uh, but this will transition into a very large ocean storm and just kind of mill around out here for the next several days eroding the western side of the big subtropical ridge that sits out here and that will allow this 95L to eventually just kind of drift north and hang out over the western Atlantic. Uh, probably not going to be very strong. It's got some wind shear already with it. You can see that the way the clouds are going off basically in one direction instead of fanning out completely in a anticyclonic fashion. There is some strong upper level wind flow there. Down here, this is what we're talking about. This is what we look for. The clouds just kind of all spread out in every direction. You see that? Lots of upward motion there. Kind of tucked away in the southern part of the main development region from any of the hostile conditions that we're seeing uh, all through this area, generally speaking. Just not very favorable uh, in the atmosphere. The ocean is certainly warm enough. Plenty of instability. And actually, that might even be lacking a little bit. The moisture, maybe it's just a little too dry out there. But the upper, upper level winds really aren't cooperating, and that's keeping things in check for now. All right, so there's the vorticity signature. Let's use a color that pops out better. There we go. There's the vorticity signature of Odette. Here's 95L. There's 97L. And the Gulf still, look, look at that. There's the remnants of Nicholas. The vorticity of Nicholas still there after all these days. Seriously, that's just crazy. Luckily, it's not raining too much because of it, at least nothing excessively. I already showed you the track map for Odette, so let's move along to the GFS here. From the 12Z run today, we'll highlight that right there. And this is the 5,000 foot level. That's what that 850 millibar part means. There's Odette showing up nicely in the vorticity of the 5,000 foot level. There's that subtropical ridge with a big chunk taken out of it right there. Otherwise, it tries to go across, but it's just thinner right through here. So if there was a hurricane coming along, it would absolutely turn up into that weakness and head out. We don't have a hurricane, however. We have an interesting area of low pressure down here, this tropical wave, 95L. And then we have this other system. I bet this gets bumped up uh, at the 2 p.m., maybe even to a high probability of development, but again, it's going to kind of head off into the open ocean like this. I'll show you that as we go through the next few days. So let's take this out. In fact, let me just bring me back on for a moment. I'm going to go out uh, to about, um, well, let's just do the full two weeks because I want to show you something. 
in the long range. You know, and normally we don't look beyond five, six, seven days because why? You know, there's just too much chaos going on and you can't look at a deterministic model like this and spot one particular weather feature and say, oh, that's going to be there at day 12. You know, the odds of that are very, very low. But what we look for are signs that things are changing in that operational guidance. And I'm going to show you that as we move through. So let's take this out first to 24 hours right there. And you see Odette up here south of uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. Again, a very large wind system there. Kind of a mid-latitude storm system out over the ocean, probably losing its tropical characteristics by this time. We'll see. And then there's the sharp wave reflectivity, if you will, that indication of the strong tropical wave axis. You can see the way the wind barbs curve in here. Not very enthusiastic, the GFS, with developing 95L any longer. And then there is 97L out there. So let's just move along here the next few days. Uh, this is 48 hours right here. Still not much with 95 or 97. So let's go to 72 hours. Same kind of thing. So either these are not going to develop much or the GFS doesn't have a good handle on things, which is going to be the reality. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see uh, for sure. That's day three. There's day four, 96 hours. And then finally, day five, 120 hours, a couple things to point out. No, this doesn't develop much. That's 95L. There's another piece of energy here, another one here, another one here. There's Odette now, a pretty strong ocean storm uh, up in the North Atlantic, kind of stuck between these big areas of high pressure. And that's really about it out to day five. Nothing too concerning at all for any land masses. And that's good news. So let's just stretch this out and go to day six. There's day six. There's day seven. So that's a week out right there. You see what happens. These tropical systems come along. There's another one that tries to get going. But now at about day 10, just kind of showing you how the pattern's trying to change here, you start to see some energy blossoming over here in the Western Caribbean. We really don't look this far east into the Atlantic with any particular... Uh, concern this time of year once we get to later September. Just too much troughiness out over the Atlantic. The ridges break down. Yes, once in a while something could come across. And we certainly had Matthew in late September into early October of 2016 that came all the way across and did what it did. You remember that? It came on up here and kind of it's a pretty good representation of what Matthew did. Pretty close. Low latitude. Yes, that can happen. Hazel did it in 1954. Um, you know, but it's pretty rare. So we really start to focus at the end of September, no matter what hurricane season it is, a busy season, a not so busy season, climatologically speaking, the end of September into October, we start watching this region right through here much closer. And this is where most of the activity starts to take place. And so sure enough, at day 10, and beyond, something tries to pop up there, and you know, we're way out, way out, September 30th here, and um, let's just stop at uh, 288 hours, all right? So that's far enough out in time, and you see what happens here. The model indicating, at least in the operational guidance, lowering of pressures over the Caribbean, big, strong high pressure out over the basically the central Atlantic, more impulses trying to come off, and we would expect that because of the strong standing wave sitting over Africa off the map extent here, of course. So this makes sense. You know, we look at this and you think, does that even make sense? Is the model just ridiculous? And at least this makes sense because we saw in my update yesterday that the EPS, the Ensemble Prediction System weeklies, showing upward motion over the Indian Ocean and part of Africa, all that upward motion fostering these tropical waves to develop. And those tropical waves, you see them right there, those are pieces of energy. Those sail out into the Atlantic, so to speak, and those can eventually blossom. It's not like there aren't any. So this makes sense. Will there be something right there on September the 30th at 8 a.m. Eastern time? That's what 12Z stands for in this context anyway, 12 Zulu time. No, probably not. But the overall sign is, yeah, it looks like things are going to continue on to be kind of busy, not shut down. 
So then we have to just see, does something wander into an area where conditions are very favorable? Maybe over here, maybe in the vicinity of the islands, maybe off the southeast coast? We don't know. But there are opportunities for development out there as we go forward. So I want to show you something real quick here related to 95L. Uh, this is the upper levels of the atmosphere. Here's the east coast of the U.S., southeast coast anywhere. There's Florida and Mexico, Central America. Uh, nice area of anticyclonic flow in the upper atmosphere right here. And then you've got this little tut, tropical upper tropospheric trough. Air is diverging here, spreading out, converging or coming together here, diverging over here. So it's this zone right in here that is not favorable for anything to develop. And where is 95L? Right over here and it heads right into that zone. Now everything moves together. You know, you see that? There's 95, it shows up briefly as a thousand mil, uh, 1,008 millibar low, but it's sitting in an area of pretty strong southerly flow. Those winds, at least 20 knots, maybe 30 knots, some of those gradient lines in there, the colors. Yeah, not very favorable overall for sure. Um, just as an example, if this was sitting right underneath there, just as an example, that's favorable. Right under the anticyclone, then the wind in the upper atmosphere fans out in every direction and you get the perfect ventilation, right? This is not because it's getting sheared from a singular vector, one particular vector, this way coming in from the southeast or the south, and that's not good for development. And that holds true for the next several days and you can see, I mean, that's just a strong southerly flow on the back side of this ridge of high pressure in the upper levels. A little cutoff low here. Just not favorable for development. So that's why it doesn't appear anyway that much is going to happen with 95L for us to be too concerned with. All right. All right. Well, that is it from me for today. You guys have a great rest of your Saturday. I'll say goodbye. Have a good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Sedeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.